so many technical things. things. Yeah, screwed it up. Hey. <laughs> I was just bitching because I just had a mom call. It drives me crazy when moms call for their 18 year old children. It drives me crazy. Well, I, wanted, I had to call for my 16 year old this morning. But that's different. <laughs> it's not, I want my kid like the 16 year old. I'm like, dude, you should. Okay. But an 18 year old is yeah. 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 right now. It's and you decided to drive on high school, so maybe this yeah. is the natural repercussion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. The guy should face me. Good, how are you? Yeah. Oh, do you guys want to have a little friend of Well, uh, yeah, I like to, but also the. Thought maybe a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I take one. Hey, Brent. How's it going? All right. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. Huh? Yep. So I guess yeah, I did take care of the uh once we get the roll and start the recording. I already got the live stream going. I guess it's recording already, but but anyway, yeah, just manage the people coming in. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you, Tom. All right. Take care. Hey, Mary. Oh. What the happening? What? The happening? Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Oh, crap. Yeah, I'm going to have to leave for Nice to be uh, able to Colorado. You said? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thanks, Quinn, for sending us immediate emails because we he knows it's it like a better send you another email with the packet. He knows. It does have to be right at the bottom. My life for sure.
<laughs> Not always. We're trying to decrease the number of return generators. Which is trying. They like it so much. I, when I went to jail, I don't remember the jailers. I remember when they called. <laughs> I remember when they called my dad, he was like, yeah, I won't be, no, I'm not coming down yeah, there. I like this hotel. You can keep her. Kevin online? Kevin's online, yes. So Kevin and yeah. um, Chris Conner. I'm going to do your, your PowerPoint again, are you? Thank you for calling out who's here. Okay. I love Kevin. That's what I thought of that. And uh, all right, are we good to go, Chris? Good to go. All right. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> it is... November 14th, and I will open this special joint meeting of the Grand County Commission and Grand County Budget Advisory Board and uh, Budget Workshop. Uh, present are Commissioners uh, Scott, Dan, um, Koba, Nadine, and Mike Adler. And online, we have uh, Commissioner Walker. Um, we have Strategic, I did, uh, Strategic Development Director uh, Chris Baird. Clerk, Wojta, County Administrator, or Associate County Administrator, Quinn Paul, uh, Commission Coordinator, Alicia um, Oliver. We have on the Budget Advisory Board, um, Renee Baker. We have Brian Hunsacker. Brian's not on. Oh, Brian's not on. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Honey. Chris, me, and uh, Kevin Walker also, and Chris Kaufman. Uh, okay, and Chris Kaufman on Zoom. And, and, and Mary also on the budget advisory board, and Mary is too. Okay, yeah. budget advisory board, yeah. Brian's on the travel council board. Yeah. Got it. Is here. Got it. Got it next up. We also have uh, uh, Maddie Logowitz from the Active Trails and Transportation and Shan Hackwell from the Sheriff's Office and August Granith from Economic Development Department and Biga Metzer from the Film Commission. All right. I think that's it. I will. Uh, I'll turn the discussion over to our strategic development director, Chris Baird. All right. First off, uh, to take care of some business for the budget advisory board, um, Gabe sent out some minutes this morning. I don't know if anybody's had a chance to review them or not, but the minutes for 10, 28, 2022. Any, does anybody on the budget advisory board want to make a motion to approve those minutes from the last meeting? I'll make a motion to approve. Yeah. Is there a second? Uh, second. Mary seconds. Any corrections or discussion? Uh, All right, call the vote. All those in favor say aye, raise your hand. This is just budget advisory board for now. Aye. Aye. All right, so that passes. Uh, how many is that on the budget advisory board? Me? One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. Seven, six. We're Just missing one. Crazy. Kevin and Chris. Oh, okay. So yeah. So six to six to zero with shaving absence passes. All right. Moving on to discussion items, uh, action items. First up, we've got August um, with review of possible action uh, regarding the economic development department. First off, I just wanted you know to have you August do an overview of anything yeah. that's changed okay. um, or the you know that you would like to change the like or the. Travel Council Advisory Board would like to change yeah. uh, relative to what we could present in the last hand of question. Yep. <clears throat> so maybe if you could separate out your proposed recommendations from, from the board's recommendation. Sure. Yeah. And so I might, I don't know how it's going to go, but I might try to update the self advantage as, you go. as we go. Okay. So you can. Log on and put up okay. your spreadsheets, and then I'll that works for me. Yeah, and then jump on that to sell advantage. Get that. I just have to get out of this. Just doing the inside work with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to know how to get into your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got my own torture. Fair enough. <laughs> I 
I will say the younger generation was a lot faster. Still feel slow when I'm the one that everyone's waiting for. Fine, he used the multi gap. <laughs> I think probably we start with the letter from the board. That's probably the best way to just get some context before I go through the spreadsheet. If that sounds good to people. Okay. Okay, so this is, I'll just read this first section. Um, again, this is within the context of the Travel Council Advisory Board serving as the statutorily required tourism tax advisory board. Um, uh, TRT laws require that the TTAB, check the TCAB, come up with some requirements, some, some list of, of recommendation expenditures um, for TRT and TRCCA. Um, so I'll just read through this. On Tuesday, September 13th, the Travel Council Advisory Board met at a regular meeting to work on a list of budget priorities for expenditure in accordance with transit room tax, tourism, recreation, cultural convention, and airport facilities and tax. Uh, the September 28th meeting, the Economic Development Advisory Board met at a regular meeting to work on a list of budget priorities for TRT expenditures, the focus on the allowable use to establish promote economic diversification activities in Grant County. Travel Council Board reviewed the Economic Development Board recommendations and incorporated them into this letter. On Wednesday, October 12th, the Moab Area Travel Council Advisory Board revised and approved the amended list of budget priorities. And last week on Tuesday, November, November 8th, Travel Council amended the approved list of budget priorities from that 12th meeting. So what's in here is about that state. Below is the body's final list of expenditure priorities. Items are ranked from greatest to least importance. An item determined to be most important in the category will be listed first. Whereas a lower funding priority item would be listed the second. Um, it was it was voted on appropriately by the board members. Uh, the, the highlight based off of the 2023 draft budget as presented by uh, myself, the Travel Council Board at last week's meeting was A, to increase support to the Moab to Miami Valley Film Commission, either via contribution from economic diversification TRT funds or via outside partnerships. Two, pull funds from the TRT reserves in order to increase the quantity of expenditures dedicated to quote, additional steady drip marketing in the paid media accounts. And otherwise, the board did not object to August revisions to the draft budget as presented, which we'll go over in a moment. Um, at a high level, um, on mitigation expenditures projected at $5 million or 63% of the total collections, the body resolved to make no recommendation for change and instead leave these funding priorities that they are already allocated. Um, on establish and promote expenditures projected at just under 3 million or 37% of total TRT collection um, for the one third of that 37% for economic diversification, the priorities start with salaries and overhead for, for activities, um, strategic planning, workforce development with a focus on apprenticeship programs and on the job training, workforce opportunity and needs analysis and education support, continuation of the STAR grant, um, match for the rural county grant program, um, focusing on some business development priorities with the USU Moab SBDC director, building out an entrepreneurial program, doing some business mentorship and basic business education. Um, and lastly, additional department capacity to execute data and research, content storytelling, and program development. Um, lastly, there was a kind of an ask for commercial space development that ended up at the bottom because it's probably a longer term priority the next year, but. There's a demand for some kind of an incubator space, commercial kitchen, and just additional affordable commercial space in general. So uh, before you move on, maybe we should <clears throat> talk about whether or not these recommendations are currently in the budget request. Good point. Yep. So um, I have taken this and put into the economic diversification most of this. I would say the only things don't have money allocated to them explicitly. The strategic planning was workforce development, start grants. Um, the rural county grant doesn't actually require a match anymore, so that's irrelevant. Um, there's money for the SBDC director 
And these programs uh, at the moment would be carried out in partnership through their existing programs. Um, we have some additional data and research work in here. Um, and then in terms of a reclass of our admin role, trying to add some more program development um, capacity there. So we're gonna be able to speak to that later. There isn't any money for commercial space development at the moment. <clears throat> Okay, anybody like, have any questions on that diversification recommendation from Travel Council Advisory Board? All right, cool, onward. Um, on recreation, film production, and conventions expenditures uh, projected at just under 600,000 or one fifth of $3 million. Uh, number one was salaries and overhead for the Grand County Act Trail and Transportation Department and the Moab to Monument Valley Film Commission. Um, the second was the Moab to Monument Valley Film Commission budget. Um, including increased administrative supports, um, so funding for an updated production resource directory and familiarization tour. Um, what is currently in the budget is salary and benefits for a director, as well as uh, $35,000 in um, program support. It doesn't include admin support. Um, there is some familiarization tour budget. Um, there's not a specific line item for an updated production resource directory. Um, for there, there is a contribution to the Responsible Recreation Program. Um, the Community Event Grant didn't, and the Moab Art Trails both are not in that section of the budget, uh, but we've added some funding from the tourism promotion side. Um, I can ha ask, answer any questions you've got into that. We'll get there. What you mean that the community event grant and the art trails aren't in that budget, but you've transferred TRT money into whatever other budget? You haven't transferred TRT money, but basically this fund is spoken for, and Chris can answer any details on that. Uh, so there were there were two uh, uh, two event grants, yeah. and I don't know what the distinction exactly was between them. So we kind of consolidated them over on the promotion side. And so this this part of it doesn't have that um, finite. Yeah, but Same it's still it still yeah. exists, but it's, it's being funded out of a different. And yeah, and I mean it's kind of tight. This particular pot of money is, you know, it's our competition between the mission and uh, responsible rent program, and then also a pretty sizable contribution to uh, the city's pilot transit program, and so. You know, until we, we got, I think, three years more of paying into that pilot transit program, and then that'll free up about 77000 <laughs> Right now, free time. On the tourism expenditures section, uh, predicted at one just a little under $1.4 million. It's the balance of funds after economic diversification and rectal conventions has been maxed out out of that 37% at 2.9 million. Priorities are salaries and overhead for the tourism division of the economic development department, consistent and strategic marketing, strategic planning, brand planning, visitor education, including printed travel guides, um, the Moab Steward Program, OHB education, arts time entry um, type programs that we need to do education for the visitor population on familiarization tours, special event grant program, similar to the other fund, additional department capacity to execute data research and content storytelling projects. Um, there's a handful of new line items or, or refurbished line items on that on both capacities there. Um, there is farther down here, uh, discovermoab.com overhaul, which would be the outcome of a strategic planning and a brand refresh. Um, that would mostly be done post-2023, but there's money in there to do um, some work on that. And then the short-term rental identification and monitoring software, um, and then the Moab grant is at the bottom. So in terms of all of the grant programs that were either previous or introduced last year, the only one that didn't get funding to the features of the Moab Grant, which is the marketing our awesome businesses grant uh, aimed at sending um, some of our promotional monies to our smaller uh, tourism businesses. Um, and that wasn't necessarily because the program was a failure, but we had to kind of triage what we wanted to keep and what we wanted to cut. And uh, while we would have liked to have kept that at some capacity, we just kind of ran out of money. Um, 
So sure. that that was discussed at the travel council. Uh, like we'd rather spend random advertising money out here than give it to people locally. Uh, I would say that there's definitely discussion, and the outcome was it kind of had several conversations, but that I think the focus coming out of it was on here. They would like to see that consistent strategic marketing and domestic and international markets um, in favor of that kind of a smaller program for local businesses, if they have a thing. Okay. Okay. It was local businesses that were tourists. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's correct. Um, and did we get to have as many applicants as people have met? Yeah. And if we, if you had talked to Ben, he wouldn't say it was a bad program. It was maybe just rolled out at the same time as the Star Grant. So a lot of people applied and focused on that program instead. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, just to you know, point out, these are the recommendations. The commission actually got the final call. Right. Lastly, on TRCCA funds, um, there was a call for, you know, kind of trying to support some of the meeting technology and acoustic issues at the Grand Center, um, as well as Star Hall. Um, it wasn't too specific, but just I think recognizing that those are big assets for kind of meeting meetings and, and, and events in our community, and that's something that they thought would be a good use of TRCA. DRCCA funds. So we have already budgeted uh, sound system for the Grand Center. What kind of technology at Star Hall are we talking? Does anybody have any details on that? Yeah, I'm not, I can't remember exactly what it was, but just uh, wanting to ensure that maybe. I brought it up. You brought it up, okay. I believe among other people, but because it is a very often used event venue for films, and concerts and otherwise. I don't know when the last time any of the projector or anything has been looked at, but I do know that the film commission, prior to my being the film commissioner, did actually donate all of that equipment to Star Hall from so a grant from back in the day. Sound system was updated four years ago. Okay. The projector was not. Um, and then the, the newer generation cables were run at the same time. So, but as far as that goes, it's far down. Okay, and there's still no internet or um, anything that actually people no, in we, the we, modern age of technology we, need to use. We played the idea that just we weren't have the stolen priority. And by by that you like Wi Fi, mm -hmm. or even just owning a, a temporary permanent hotspot that is usable by, you know, through the processes that all of the people that come in need to use it. But I mean I'm not I don't run the boards there. I just run events there. So I don't I don't know all the details. It was just something that was suggested um because of issues that we've seen or had, you know, while well, events are happening. <clears throat> well maybe Sean you have a bat soon to take to get uh internet over there. I know they probably have some back end stuff on the well I think it's just all we have to do is there was a couple of projects to propose to us from uh, Emily or somebody, but that pole is right outside. We have to drive dig a trench from there to the side of the building. Um, uh, well, I think it was about two or three grand at the time. Okay. So well, something we can look into, but we have to do it pretty soon to get back and approve the budget here pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. I think that do you know about Wi Fi issues at the Grand Center? I don't. I know it's there, but it's not very what? usable throughout the building. Oh, right. Yeah. I've been in a thing where we were trying to vote in a poll in the main room and like nobody could get the Wi Fi. Uh, didn't we have problems when we were doing one of our workshops? Something else. We had a power out of one. Does the sound system have a like a hard budget on it now, or is it um, fifty thousand? That's pretty substantive. Yeah, I mean, it probably is also acoustic acoustic treatment. <clears throat> you know, I know in some of those rooms that it's like the return air duct is really loud. In that back room, which gets used quite a bit. And, uh, uh, into the meeting, the virtual meeting on Zoom. But yeah, the. Uh, you know, we just need a list of these things, but more in, you know, specific than just upgrades. But uh, so could 
Wi-Fi for Grand Center dovetail on under that fifty thousand? Uh, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of this stuff is guess working because we haven't gone into bid or anything, sure. so it's we don't know it's cost estimates. You know, you know, we put the you know, budget in for so much with maybe some cushion with the land center and had that priority and get that job done. And then if there was anything left that we could move towards the star hall, because in my opinion, the, the acoustics of the Grand, Grand Center have been such an issue for so long. That's yeah. a high priority. Well, when we get to the capital project, we can talk a little bit more about that. Okay. Any questions on this letter document? Um, we're gonna look at some line item changes and, and material numbers in a moment. That's like it. Give me one So do you want to just go over the, the additional changes rather than you don't have that way to go through the entire entire thing? But uh, yeah, let's go through what's changed since the tenant okay. budget. So the last time you know that we were at budget advisory board, so anything that's <clears throat> a different recommendation of yours or the travel council advisory cool. board, let's cover those. But let's do it in sequence. Yep. So maybe we'll start with economic diversification. Uh, have you got is your spreadsheet? I got my spreadsheet up here. I I didn't make any material changes to let's see. If I, so this is all the numbers in here are what was presented in that initial tentative budget. Um, so the recommendation from the travel council board to add additional monies from here support the film commission um, or partner with an outside entity. I didn't put any numbers into into the diversification budget to reflect that um, because there was going to be a conversation today kind of on that topic of exploring that outside partnership. Um, yeah, so that's a, a discussion out of here. Yeah. Kind of, Otherwise, there's no change from, from this. I think worth noting for the commission is just some quick amounts, which is that Star Grant is currently budgeted for four hundred thousand for next year. It was originally budgeted for five hundred, and then expended a little about a million dollars this year due to reserve pulling. Um, and then having some money to start building out a workforce development program, which would be implemented by the person who would be reclassing in the, in the admin role in our department, um, as well as the hundred thousand contribution to the small business development center. Um, and then some strategic planning is, is in here. So we have the big program from diversification. So this budget, as it is, is zeroed out. Yeah. Yeah, so we're not drawing up fund balance. We don't really have a fund balance this anymore. We're proposing to use up the rec penalty fund balance this year already. Yeah. And so there isn't really any money to carry over. I can um, also it kind of depends. I mean, if there if we don't spend this full budget this year, then some will roll over, but it's not gonna be a lot. Might be useful to just really quickly touch on the reserve numbers. Um these are some calculations I worked out with Chris. So just for context, we came into 2022 with a budget surplus um of 3.3 million dollars in the TRT related fund balance broken out in these categories, 1.5 in kind of the pre-2021 tours and promotion and rec home convention reserves, uh, 500,000 in the promotion specific post-2021 and a million in the post-2021 post tours vacation. Um, much of this was spent down um, this past year. Uh, this was a contribution to GCAT for the Trail Ambassador Program this year, for my understanding. Uh, I mean, we pulled money out for the mobile stage, for the mobile stage as well. Um, 
these amounts that happened during the budget amendment this fall represent the contribution towards the star grant program the tourism or the tourism and diversification flood relief grant program um, and the additional uh, marketing dollars so that brought us down to um just let me go over brought us down to at the moment um what's currently forecasted um, in the budget for the beginning of next year is about 1.6 million total 1.2 in this kind of general fund that doesn't have diversification allowable use and 400,000 in this diversification allowable use um, and then this is the number of what's currently budgeted and the additional request from uh, this meeting to pull from the fund balance um, which would which would bring us to about 1.1 million dollars in, in uh, fund balance at the beginning of 2023. Uh, so all the rest of the changes are in the tourism section. August, could you go back to the previous screen? Um, so that five hundred six thousand dollars, you know, in the second from the right column, it's got the box around it. So some of that's from the um, recreation promotion budget that we already talked about, and then there's an additional three hundred and some that you're about to go over. Is that correct? That's all from here. So uh, this is all all contributions from fund balance that's currently um, budgeted. There's 196,000. So that was everything that we talked about at the last meeting. Um, and then the 310 are the additional uh, fund balance contributions required to balance the budget with the additional um, requests. Since okay, but that that 196 figure it, it includes a mixture of things in the tourism promotion and recreation and film com promotion is that what i remember i mean chris would have to click on it in cassell because it is it does have a there's a worksheet in cassell that has the, the exact numbers so uh, yeah let me see if i can look so this is from the tenant budget this is what the 196 was so we got i didn't put great detail down you might have to i can i can elaborate but it has a worksheet in it but um so there's something i put down called surveys for fifty thousand. yeah you want to explain what that is yep so and maybe I, I, I really just I, I didn't need like each line item and i just wondered how much of it is coming from the non-tourism promotion and how much of its tourism promotion for the other items chris you know, for the well, station data billboards and steady drip i think it's it's all, all tours of promotion yeah. so it's all tours of, okay great thank you that would come out of that general line but this so this is the money that uh is coming in from the bank essentially money that's not going to be from the annual revenue the yeah. spending down the balance essentially okay um all right i'll dive into some of these adjustments uh one quick one hey alex yes i'm learning that i need glasses maybe i got <laughs> a little bit bigger for the screen yeah yeah yep i know uh, yes <laughs> i just put them on <laughs> i read all my tiny little size 12 <laughs> font words all stacked on top of each other that's eight okay. <laughs> is it really Set up, yeah. <laughs> Oops. No, this is straight like yourself. This is what yourself gives me format. Right. Um, all right, I'm gonna start with um changes to international marketing uh dollars. So all right, so are we on the tour the promotion now? Yep. So if you let me get to that so that if we decide to make any of these changes, I can plug them in. Okay. Um so this this um was partially this is basically a staff recommendation uh in addition to the tentative budget so talk with melissa who's been manning all of our international marketing focus work um and worked with the utah office of tourism international team to kind of just check these against their strategies and, and our strategies and the main changes are um basically some of some of the um Trade shows and sales missions that I had cut in the initial rounds um, were identified as really kind of essential. So two trade shows going to Go West and IITA, um, as well as two international sales missions, one to Canada and one to Switzerland and Austria were, were prioritized. So that's an additional twelve and a half thousand dollars 
um, as well as $20,000 in um, international marketing that would be done cooperatively with the state and international markets. Um, and then lastly, a $10,000 <clears> budget to work with some international marketing consultants um, so that when we go to trade shows and we go to do these sales missions, we have a fairly developed um, concept and pitch that's relative to our market, what international, what that international market is excited about in our area. Um, and that would kind of translate stuff that's relevant and build some slide decks and, and just have a little bit of our own strategy rather than just kind of taking backing off of what the Utah Office of course it does internationally. Um, so that's a total change of 42.5 thousand uh, that's on top of the current budget. So that would require also more money out of the bank. And that's currently, that's adding up to 310. Yeah. Uh, so I just don't have that budget in yet. In the Casella it's not budget. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. so I'm just making the point that the budget is balanced. Well, you know, the tenant budget was mostly balanced except for 196,000 against the expected annual revenue. And so we did choose to draw some out of the fund balance that 196, but now we're talking about drawing another 310 on top of that, right? That's correct. But didn't we have a large fund balance that we needed to spend down? Was yeah, we did this year. I mean, we, we still have more that we could spend down. Um, I think we've extinguished the strictly tourism promotion pot. And so we're now into the, the pot of money that was built up before the legislation change, which would be spent on recreational prevention for tourism promotion, but not diversification. So we don't really have, uh, we can't use that money for diversification, we can use it for basically anything else. So all of these that you just laid out. <clears throat> yeah, so everything that's in beige that we're gonna go off over are at the moment, plan to be coming out of reserves to cover. Um, okay. you know, could also but, but I, I want to re repeat something that, that Chris just said, because I, I think it's important. Often when we're making these decisions in the tourism promotion budget, the funds are just competing against different uses that, that fall under this, you know, establishing and promoting tourism. But in this case, because they're going into reserves and those are pre-2021 reserves, this is stuff that's, this is money that could otherwise be spilt for promoting films, promoting recreation, you know, the, the broader spectrum of things we do there. So um, this is showing that at the moment, um, if, we, if we didn't pull anything out of the fund balance this year, uh, which we already planning to do for the 2023 budget, there would be 1.2 in that general tourism rec home convention general use. There's, there's zeroed out in the tourism promotion. However, you know, there could be some contributed from underspending from this budget year. Um, and then that's the diversification specific number. So but, that's that's after the big budget amendment we made this year. Yeah. So you remember, we already made that big budget amendment to pull like 1.2 million out of the bank, which is right there this right. year. And so this is, if that all gets spent, which is probably won't, that would be the fund balance that's left. So that 2023 forecast initial PRQ. Yeah. And then but, it, to Kevin's point, if we put it in the bank before the law change, does the old law apply to it or does the new law apply to it? Well, that's a gray area. I mean, if you read the statute, it's not really clear, but it seems to me like the safest way to do it. Is to go by the old law or the new law? The old law. Yeah. Because the new law just says that it needs to be spent according to any of the allowable expenses. You know, that's not very descriptive. And so... You know, to me, if it was brought in, the safe thing to do is say if it was brought in under the old law and spent it under those restrictions. And the, the you know, so um, it's, you know, it's not really clear in the code sure. exactly how you're supposed to administer reserve um, other than it just says it needs to be spent according to the allowable expenditure. And so I interpret that to be the allowable expenditures at the time it was collected. So it's not competing against diversification, but it is competing against the active trails. Like responsible well, recreation, I mean, responsible yeah, rec. Because yeah. that yeah. money could be used for anything that, that you know economic development does except for diversification. So rec down the bench and the tourism promotion. So is there more you're laying out that we're considering with yep. when we start arm wrestling? Okay. Yes. So let's maybe do that first. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so that's the international marketing piece of it. And maybe I'll just lay out what, what's that, what else is in here and then we'll go in there. Yeah, so, okay. so also, I don't know, do you do you, do you have um, recommendations that are coming from you that are different from the advisory board? There there are some that are that are basically additional to what I brought to this meeting. So I'll call those out. Okay. So these are I brought to this meeting to say, hey, this is what the tentative budget here. It says, here's what upon second look at the tentative budget, what I Realize I would like to have changed myself and the staff go this way, kind of got co signed by the travel council board. And then uh, there's additional on top of that um, that was recommended. So all the pan rooms are the additional. Yeah. All right. Yep. So then the next piece is kind of an arts and events focused um, section. So the we talked about the event grants earlier. Um, so we've had the special event grant program in here in the past. Um, so this, you know, has historically been higher, more like 40,000, 50,000 in the past in terms of total spend, um, in terms of trying to balance that budget with, uh, forecasted revenues. Um, that ended up getting brought down to more like 10. Um, and then the community event grant, which we created this year out of the rec building commitments budget to basically prioritize uh, supporting events such as like the free, free concert series that we had supported with the special event grant in the past. And uh, kind of a slightly distinct set of goals rather than being so heavily kind of presentation oriented, although obviously supporting and developing new events kind of as a part of our ecosystem, driving it more towards, you know, what are these events that maybe need some support? I think next year, thinking about like the Grand, uh, the Grand County Fair that folks are trying to pick up um, and support those types of events with some of these dollars. So that, that money up here landed at um, 20, let's see here, there's two components of that, but that was 20 grand. So basically what was budgeted is about 30 grand for, for event grants. And the recommendation is to pull from fund balance to bring that up to about 80 total. So 40 for the community event grant program or 40 for the special event grant program. Um, I can tell you we currently have requests on that funds of about $300,000 for, uh, I believe the community event grant and about a million for the special event grant program. So it's a highly sought after resources in this community. Uh, and then the other kind of arts and events related one was I pared down our contribution to arts trails, which requested $5,000. Um, so I can, I added another 2950 to bring that up to 5,000 and then a, um, this program that increases engagement with things like murals and sculptures, sculpture tours, it's a, it's an application called Van Wingo um, that we would use, um, that would basically would be like Pokemon Go for, for public art. So, you know, we're engaging visitors when they come into town. We're like, hey, these are the sculptures. You can get off Main Street, you can check all these businesses that are maybe not on the main drag. And as you engage with it, you get you know, discounts to local businesses. And, you know, it's kind of a way that we can say to visitors who are like, hey, I'm an art person. How can I engage with art in the community? Um, to me, it seems like a good way to kind of leverage the amount of money we put into our trails in the past and really get some more engagement with it. You know, we could add that to the murals that we had in town and all of that. Um, so that's a $10,000 software kind of technology cost. Yearly so, or like one time? Um, that's a really good question. I, I've just had some initial conversations with the, with the provider and I kind of just said, what would it cost generally to do this kind of thing? Uh, he quoted about 9,500. So typically these days software is an annual cost. Yeah. Yeah. So, good question. But that would be what I would budget for next year. And I would imagine that if it doesn't do what we hope it does, then we're not locked into the model trend. Well, we'll look at that before we sign yeah. the contract. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, that's the arts and events kind of section um, there, which is a total, total of. Um, 63 grand from fund balance. And then the 
last kind of additional section is in the domestic marketing and visitor education space. Um, so the, you know, the big top line recommendation from the Travel Council Board um, was there's this category in the marketing budget under paid media that I've called, quote, additional steady drift marketing. Um, so originally I had um, you know, requested, we, we got this basically last, the last meeting to about $100,000. And the thought here was that we have a fly market campaign that the state is supporting. We're contributing $225,000 to that next year. Uh, the state is providing a one-to-one -one grant match. So that's a $450,000 program, but that runs only till March. Yep. Till March. And so the thought here was, you know, we've, we've spent a bunch of money on this creative and the campaigns that we run this fall with this nature's masterpiece um, kind of new approach to some of our marketing. Um, and the thinking here would be, let's make sure we're in market domestically. Um, we basically work with Love Communications. That what are our goals and how can we most effectively use $100,000 or $200,000? Uh, so there's an additional $100,000 request. Kind of, that's the Travel Council Board's additional recommendation. That's how I would put it. Um, and spread that around the year so that we're in market being strategic um, and kind of having that strategic and consistent market Marketing, um, that's requested by by the board, um, and I think that we've heard by the DAB. So the actual messaging um, is locked in by that process. But that would be that would be that would be one big request there. Um, the other piece is last year we spent two hundred thousand dollars on a on a marketing campaign for timed entry. It was brand new, and we anticipated all kinds of chaos, much of which we did see. Um, kind of anticipating a version of it rolling out this spring as well. Um, and so not in the original budget request, um, but adding another hundred thousand um, dollars for a one-time campaign for next year to kind of echo whatever the changed program is and ensure that there is good visibility uh, with those program changes. And then a small change is a um, kind of on the visitor education piece, a contribution of five thousand dollars to for technology that meant to help support HB one eighty rollout. So imagine, you know, a case of iPads or something like that that folks can do their registration and education program with. Um, so that's that's the big change. Those those focus with a two hundred and five thousand um, dollar contribution. Those numbers, you know, are are based off of just past spend estimate what feels like a good, good program number. Um, the last piece that's worth mentioning that doesn't necessarily require any budgetary changes um, is that uh, as Kev Kevin brought up last time, um, kind of a renewed interest in visitor and resident surveys. Um, and so we added a $50,000 line um, for, for that work. I, I reached out to Love um, and they, they provided, you know, that they could do res resident survey for about $15,000 and some visitors said survey for about $10,000. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, I had talked a lot about doing some more special events analysis where we're investing in a, a better geo geolocation services dashboard to help figure out where are people in the valley so we can help have a better understanding of what is our visitation number as well as you know the geofence osta during jeep safari where are they all coming from where are they going how long are they in town for um, etc and they he said that they could do that for about two and a half thousand dollars per event um, and so you know the, the last piece was that there's a, there's a budget line in there for twenty thousand to help do data insight management gather all of the visitation data, occupancy data, spend data in our, in our community that, you know, I think to be honest this year, our department has a hard, has had a hard time actually distributing in a regular and effective um, manner. So the thought would be to basically outsource the production of a monthly um, insight report on all of that information that um, we can just distribute to the community, to the commission, et cetera. Uh, and so that, that was up from 2230. So on net, um, just moving some of those numbers around within the budget, um, but no change to the, to the to the balance there within that category. Where is that? Okay. Uh, I think probably going to, I might 
log into Cassell because I can click through them. So, or you can share that. It's in. It's oh, that's okay. Works. It was already in the blue. That's right. Yeah, it's under professional services. Oh, okay. You can. Oh, okay. Cassell has like the worksheet level. That's fine. Which one are we looking for? Um, it's under um, professional services. What was the name of the? The sub item. Yeah. So about. data insight management's at 20k and then yeah. visitor resident something service at 50. So the total budget in there is 70 for both of those. Yeah. And this adjusted would bring it the total to um 55k plus whatever event, however number of events you'd want to do. So that's potentially a place to cut some some funding or add some special kind of analyses to. There was just a request that the travel council board be able to figure out. How much is that resident that there's something that uh, surveying going to cost? Yeah. I think the 50 grand kind of came from top of that. So that's everything in terms of the, the conversation. So, most of this recommendation is, is staff or director co signed by the Travel Council Board. The main things on top of it that um, I would say our Travel Council Board recommended are the additional 100,000 for. Um, the kind of quote additional steady drip marketing piece and then um, you know either contributing additionally or partnering on the film kitchen piece. So real quick under paid media you yep. have three hundred eighty four thousand four hundred dollars that the steady drip the international that we've already co opted with and and more international. I might I think at this point I'll pull up Cassell so that we can look at that. I can. I guess does it already include some international marketing? Um, there's no there's no international marketing spend. There's international kind of market development um, with some of the trade shows um, and um, and that work. So so the twenty thousand is additional and is not in that paid media category. Chris, you might have to log in to sell like. I'm all right, Doctor. And you have to share? Yeah, yeah. You want to? All right, so if you click on the paid media worksheet, yeah, change the font on this. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the co op fly market campaign that's that's the TRT contribution, the 50% for the co op grant we got last year. Um, so we're we're locked into that one. Um, the hundred thousand is what's currently budgeted for the additional steady drip marketing. So the travel council board recommendation would double that. Um, and then there's billboard expenses for billboards we already are contracted with the North Maverick, South Maverick, Ruda billboards. Um, and then there's some billboard maintenance costs that 2000 unanticipated was put in there earlier to try to make things balanced, but we'll probably go towards you know putting up new new billboards and get new designs basically um, and then there's 30,000 in here for additional billboards um, kind of a combination of a request from Kevin as well as conversations that I've had with Maddie about um, you know how can we get people to engage with with some of this long form visitor education narrative and that the last hour, hour of the drive to Moab might be a good opportunity for that and put some billboards kind of in prime locations like coming from Helper or coming from south of town and have a on your way to Moab, check out this podcast and get the get the goss. Um, as in addition to, I think Kevin's request that just like if there's additional billboards available in town, um, getting them under contract so that we have more eyeballs on responsible recreation messaging in town, um, or what have you, whatever kind of visitor education message could be dynamic in town. That's currently what's in there. So the requested change would basically be twenty thousand for international. And hundred thousand for doubling the the marketing in the state trip category. Yeah. So. All right. That's that's what's in there. So yeah, I mean the thing to keep in mind about 
drawing all the sum down because it's, it's really one time money. So if the TRP doesn't grow to match it, you know, at some point, it means cutting back quite a bit in the future. Yeah. And so, you know, <clears throat> the fund balance is nice too, you know, from a rainy day perspective, like if uh, we see some kind of big decrease in revenue, you know, it's That's nice right. to have that to meter out things without having to do layoffs and major cuts. So I caution not to spend it all as fast as possible, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I think, I think two. I mean, we're still planning on moving a little over a million in, right? Yeah, one point one would be left over, and I would imagine it'd be higher than that because we're going to underspend. But we just don't know by how much for this year. Well, uh, we still are in jeopardy of having too much. Yeah. Okay. okay. But so one this year. I mean, we're projecting about eight million, and the statute says we're going to have half of that, half of our annual revenue. We're talking about four million, so we're. Well below the threshold, and we, you know, it was sufficient what we did this year to get well below that. But, um, but we are talking about continuing to spend that down. Pretty and significant. I, I would say I think two things that required us to kind of pare down some of these initial programs, and in some ways that I'm trying to bring back up. Kind of had some. I wasn't really planning on like the special bank coordinator position coming out of the tourist promotion component. And then we're contributing additional funding to the, uh, the trail ambassador program from this. And so a lot of, I think, the way that I've been trying to work with this is can I bring programs back up that I kind of had to cut due to those additional pressures uh, this fall? That's uh, probably a good segue for Maddie to talk about uh, why the response to the rec program is doing with the TRT money for tourism promotion. Yep, we can talk about that. Um, I want to start out by saying, I was thinking, I was at the Travel Council board meeting the other day, and I, I wish I'd explained a little bit more that some of these expenses aren't new. They're things that the Travel Council has purchased in the past. And so some of these um, items, it just makes it, it takes a workload off August and myself because rather than my staff doing the orders and then not really being able to see the budgeting software that's taking place in the August department. This just streamlines it so that we can make the orders and then we can see how much we have left and takes out that management aspect. So, um, so some of the items, I'll start with the ones that have been ordered in the past through this fund. Pass this around. These are some pamphlets. So again, these are things that our staff or staff in my department made because we have that that knowledge, um, and then they were printed by travel council in the past. So, like the and, you know, a guide to e biking, for example, where you can e bike in the area, and a guide to the whole enchilada, how to ride it safely. There's a map in there, um, and then other items we've been purchasing this year out of the responsible rec fund that are kind of um, fall into the category of more like traditional advertising and kind of like the do it like a local campaign where there was mugs and t-shirts and all that. So you have water bottles. So the trail ambassadors give these out and these have um, leave no trace principles that are specific to this one's hiking and running. We have one for mountain biking and we have one for motorized user groups, which we currently aren't really handing out. So we don't have um, the staff in place yet for that. And then we also have stickers. I think Mary had one on her. <laughs> and then we have these stickers. And so these are incentive items so that when we have our staff out in the field trying to engage with visitors, they have things that they can offer them. Um, and also there's some activities. So especially for families, um, you know, if you you go do a little leave no trace educational exercise, you get rewarded with a sticker. So more specifically, you can go to each of these items. Is that what you guys want to do? Just go. So in order, yeah, so I think I think if you just click on that responsible recreation section, <clears throat> just because that that's what we were talking about. Well, it's kind of a, an abbreviated. Um, well, so there, there's a couple different components to the transfer. There's the responsible rec transfer that's more like sort of on the ground, non marketing related elements, covering. Non marketing related salaries of responsible recs. So that's this current 31402. But then in tourism promotion, we have more of the more marketing side, you know, where messaging, you know, could end up outside of the county or influence uh, visitation to the county. 
um, even if originating within the county. So we might have to have. Are you are you prepared to share your spreadsheet? Oh, today? I am not prepared, but I can. Uh, I don't know if we need to go into that level of detail, but let me see. Okay. I can, I can also give a little bit more of a overview. 35, 30, 30. All right, let's see what I've got here. <clears throat> so 199,376 is you know the actual programming and, and advertising materials. And then 52,069 is to cover the portion of the salaries related to producing and distributing that information. So there's really two components to this contribution to that expense. <clears throat> And to give an, an overview of, so we have a line item in our budget, the Responsible Recreation Programming, um, and that includes the Trail Ambassador Program, which is kind of in two main components, like Chris mentioned. So there's the operation side of things, and then there's all these incentive items that we're handing out, um, which is kind of what we focused on for the advertising. And then in addition to that, we have a business stewardship fund where we have a, a, a program we've been developing this whole year, and we're hoping to launch next year. Where we want to have signage in businesses, we want to re reward businesses for being part of this program and um, you know distributing the information we'd like to get out to the public. And then we have the other education category, which includes going on websites like All Trails and correcting the information about out there that's about our area, which is a, a huge project. Um, developing social media content about the leave no trace principles we want for this area, and then running newspapers and the ads. Or sorry, running ads in the newspaper. Um, <laughs> And so just a quick overview. So we have, so the things that are coming out of advertising right now are, um, so those pamphlets I passed out and uh, the sandwich boards that trail ambassadors have that have, you know, trail ambassador on trail and information about it and information about what people should be doing out there. Um, the stickers, these are on there and the water bottles as well. We'd also like to have some bandanas next year to give out, just as another another thing for the public. Um, and then uh, signage for we've estimated forty five businesses for next year. We're going to kind of phase out this program, but that's our goal is to get um, signage into this could include retailers, hotels, restaurants, even. Uh, so all the materials we we want to provide to those businesses. Uh, it also includes. Um, and this is the largest item for 60,000. We've been working with August to develop a know before you go campaign. So this is online on the website. Uh, and this would have two purposes. It educates visitors and we can also use it for the business program as well because business owners, you know, they have their seasonal employees come in. They can say, go to this website. You know, you have to do a certain number of these little courses and then you get a certificate. Right. And then you can say X number of your employees are, are certified through this program. Um, and so the, the core of this program is developing um, short films. Some of them we have already through Mark Finley, and then some of them we just we still need to make. So, for example, we, ideally, if you're coming here to Rock Climb, we want to have a little video you can watch um, that is either new footage or a mix of the footage that's already um, been taken, recuts. Where you can watch that little video and then you know all the things we want you to know about rock climbing same for the river just because we have so many kind of difficult to explain messages we need to get out and so we need to rope people in and they're very specific for the activity right um also we need a little bit more information out there about human waste because that's becoming a pretty big issue out there that no one wants to see um get worse so this estimate for the 60,000, this includes an estimate of about 15,000 per video that we want to make. Um, and it might be a little on the high end, but again, it's, you know, it's film, so it costs more than the in-house stuff we do, <laughs> the pamphlets, right? And then um, another, the portion for salaries. So I have, um, we track all of our hours for each project. So last year, I actually spent 30% of my time doing responsible recreation related projects, like you know, making these things and um, developing messaging and content. It's going to go down because now we have another person to do that. So um, it includes 20% of my time, 30% of the responsible recreation program coordinator, uh, and then 5% of our trail crews time because they're the ones who are maybe going out, distributing, installing signage, etc. cetera. Um, another item on here is um, 15,000 for kiosks. 
all of our kiosks right now are, are 95 percent of them are wood and um we've had a few vandalized in the past they've been cut down and they also need to be repainted um frequently and they're also all different sizes because they were made by volunteers or BLM had extra um, so they're kind of scrapped together so that means as we're looking at doing these big educational programs we want to like have these signs that means that like every kiosk is a different size and so all these signs need to be like reformatted every time so this would just standardize them and also they'd be made of metal so we wouldn't have to worry about repainting them I think that covers everything yeah. Oh, and the Main Street, um, the kiosk on Main Street, which in the past, you know, was in your budget, and we just moved it over to mine because we have been talking to a designer about that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Chris, I, I have a, a process question. I, how how long were we planning on this meeting lasting? Just till we're done, or is uh, we, we had a we jump in, Chris. We had a planning commission meeting at four thirty, but they canceled it. So. Well, yeah, so I guess we could go as long as you can stand it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I've got to go and learn we're, on the hour in less than an hour. So I'm, that's a hard so We were planning on having another workshop tomorrow, too, also. So another two hour workshop tomorrow to help wrap things up. So the agenda <laughs> that you sent out is that for both workshops or just for today? And we've got a bunch of other. Yeah, I mean, I consider tomorrow's workshop to be kind of overflow. So like if you, you know, and it's possible that you may want to just like, sleep on it and then make some decisions tomorrow we, we also have a closed session today yeah and okay. so I, I just want to make sure we get get to those things i was you know i was test anticipating two two hour meetings so shut this one down at four okay and start again wherever we left off tomorrow at two. so, so are, you know, are we trying today no, to we'll, we'll go into closed session, session. Yeah. are we are we going to try today to to make decisions about the trt things that we've Budget request that we've just been looking at, or depends on, I mean, it depends on you. If you if you feel like you can, um, or if you want, like I say, to take some time to think about it and then make decisions tomorrow. I don't know. I mean, it's up to you. Okay. I'm not available tomorrow, so I'm happy to. If there's any, if if it feels like there's like information gaps between making a decision on any of these things today or tomorrow. Let me know, and if that decision gets pushed tomorrow, I can prepare any additional materials or pass any follow-up questions. All right. Yeah. Well, so all, is anybody ready to start making any decisions? Or well, we're, we have more to learn. I was going to say, if we got all the background we need. Because I, I mean, we've got one more topic to cover, which is film commission. Uh, Brian Scarandig is here to discuss uh, Redcliffe's has a proposal that we want to talk about. Um, but besides that, I think we've kind of covered everything that um, well, seems like economic the development related. You know, we do, we are required by statute to review and consider the Travel Council Advisory Board's recommendations, which we've done. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, so, August has translated those into some uh, recommendations for additional expenditures to the budget that we've gone over. So once we talk about the film commission, that's going to be pretty much all the presentation end of it. Yeah. We do. I do want to get into uh, the personnel request at least before you know before we have to close. Yeah. So I think we're reasonably on track, uh, but maybe before we consider whether or not we want to um, make decisions we should just finish off the presentation that we want to the film commission. I think that's a good way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay yeah. Okay yeah. So we move on to film commission um, budget. We just go over where we're at right now with the film commission budget. So let's see. I think the total film commission budget is about 147,000. 148 between there. That uh, includes uh, biggest salary and benefits, um, subscriptions, memberships, travel, office supplies and expenses, uh, utilities. All right. So utilities, yeah, might be more like directors and ad film related, but um, I do think that the total goal is about 147,000 for the film commission. And Brian, did you want to go over what your uh, proposal was? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. I believe it's August included it. Yeah. So that's with everybody if you've had an opportunity to review it. <clears throat> Basically, um, you know, one of the things when 
uh, the new ownership group took over from Colin was they wanted to, and basically they do this at every one of their major properties, is look at an opportunity to how they give back locally. And looking at the history of the property, um, the movie museum obviously is there. Um, we thought that it was an easy tie-in to figure out how could we utilize that as a jumping off point to do good in the community. And obviously the film, and uh, it, it comes down to the arts and supporting the arts in a better way. So we are um, ironically gonna be coming up with the planning commission shortly to look at our plan to build brand new movie museum. So if you're not familiar or haven't heard yet, we are moving the existing museum out of the basement and we are building a $4.4 million facility, which will basically be right across from the Fort share area. So it will kind of run up the side of the hill. Um, it will be a new 12,000 square foot facility if everything was approved. Um, roughly built into three sections. 6,000 of that is roughly the new museum. Uh, roughly 2,000 of that is a new uh, gift shop area. And then the rest of it is actually going to become uh, a full regulation size movie theater. Um, which the cool part about that is the actual facility itself, we, the, we've we hired a museum director, at least Park's own, at Duke Banner. She's been working uh, quite a bit with uh, the local law museum, but she's been doing a fantastic job of just trying to accumulate all of this stuff that has been around from all these props and all these movies, and everybody kind of has a piece. Uh, and if you've been in the movie museum, it's kind of like your high, high school yearbook kind of threw up all over the walls. Um, nothing is really kind of updated or modernized and she's we still don't have a picture of Figo on the wall which is a sore point with her uh, <laughs> so we have a whole this week uh, you know, she, there's there's a whole film commissioner uh, you know owed to the film commissioner since it started because I don't know if everybody knows this either but the very first film commissioner is George White who started you know the White uh, Ranch which is where Wycliffe is currently located so the very first film commissioner is George White uh, moving over to a new, you know, facility, we think uh, that there's an opportunity to do good. And so, what the ownership has been, and what we've been doing since January of this year, is we charge a resort fee. If you spend the night at Redcliffe, you pay it, you pay fifty dollars extra. Um, of that, ten dollars goes into the Redcliffe Foundation. We just applied for our five hundred one C uh status we have been approved by the government we're just waiting for confirmation age 12 weeks we should have an answer we're not seeing that we should um not hit that and then we are going to use those funds to support the arts specifically we are looking at supporting student scholarships that's going to be the number one thing so a lot of emphasis is placed on sports scholarship we are looking at students that want to pursue a career in acting or ballet or writing or whatever it may be that is the number one goal of the foundation. Secondary would be supporting through grants, you know, uh, local um, organizations that are already supporting the arts. And there's quite a few of them that are here, which, you know, hit you guys up, they hit us up independently as well. As a business owner, we're looking for a way that would be able to better support them in that through a grant process. And then the final and third area is how do we support local artists who are already here? So how do we give them or how do we bring in visiting art programs? So we would fund the museum. We would fund um, another aspect of our business, which uh, we're calling Live at Right Cliffs, which is you know just bringing the arts to Right Cliffs. And that is really just part of our marketing strategy going into next year. We want to be an eventful hotel. You know, we are located quite a few, 14 miles out, a 20 minute drive out of Moab. It takes stuff going on there to get people out there other than the normal, just amazing natural resources that are out there. So we're looking at concerts, we're looking at events, we're looking at bringing in speakers, doing TED Talks, all that kind of stuff falls under the Live at Right Cliffs umbrella, which falls under the Right Cliffs Foundation, which would all be part of that. Um, in our conversations, and through the course of this year, dealing with, you know, BIGA and the Film Commission, and getting you know the, the Costco production in here, it just seems like a natural kind of thing that, well, man, we should see if we can get the film commission back at Red Cliffs. Like how great would that be, particularly with the anniversary coming up? Uh, and then through conversations with Vega and then with August, 
it seems like, you know, hey, we're, you know, budgets are tight. We get it. We understand it. If we're starting a 501c and we can come up with funding, either through donors or through self-funded via our resort fee, there might be an opportunity to make this work for everyone. So we put together that deck. It kind of answers the questions about what the foundation is. Um, kind of a proposed budget, which would include the museum, live at Red Cliffs, um, our expenditures in a year, um, what we would ask of, uh, you know, TRT basically, which I understand through discussions that it is possible to do that. Um, and it's an opportunity that exists for Grand County. I will say that the movie museum, I think is gonna be an amazing showcase that is really gonna put a great spotlight on uh, Grand County and, allow the commissioner, whether they're speaker or anyone else, an amazing opportunity to use that because one of the things that we're gonna be doing on the upper level of that building is it will have production facilities. So if there are films that come in and they wanna look at their dailies, they can plug into a digital display and watch it projected on the screen in the theater. If they need a small green space area, if they need you know, uh, sound editing or audio editing or, you know, actual film editing, we're going to have a booth which we are looking at allowing everyone in the community to use as part of a learning opportunity to support them. It's there, they can use that. So um, it's just uh, uh, kind of coincidental that our goals kind of align here. Any questions? I, when you met, I've been looking at your budget and you mentioned that first we'll come the scholarships mm -hmm. for students. Um, what what I don't see that as a line item, and I'm wondering what kind of like. So our goal is, I think it's like on the we're, for the first year we're looking at a hundred thousand dollars in scholarships. That's our goal. So we're well over right now. We're probably about seventy percent there. I want to say at this point, um, you know, our owners wanted to give away a hundred thousand dollars in scholarships the very first year, which would be we would probably target July when we start the scholarship process. Um, and then start awarding those in August before school starts. Does it be a local local students or? Yeah, we're looking at Grand County in particular. It would just yeah. be Grand County. Okay. So. But, but K basically K to twelve students. K to twelve, and it also goes toward if we if there's a need in, you know, the classrooms, we'll be happy to donate them that way as well. Anyway, you got, you got. I didn't know that I was uh, going to be able to potentially uh, prepare anything to present. So I didn't. I mean, I um, I think that um, the idea of 501c3 and a foundation like this um, and bringing the Film Commission back to its um, starting point, it's a very exciting thing for the longest running corporation in the world. Um, as, uh, as Brian said, I mean, we're coming up on our 75th anniversary in 2024, which is a pretty big deal. I think that um, as a person that's been trying to be incredibly supportive of the community, just as a, a sort of a side gig to when I'm helping facilitate all these film productions coming to town, um, it's been a really difficult year. For me, and um, but I think that I feel the support and the energy coming from this in a way that I haven't in the past, and I, um, I think it would be a remarkable thing. Um, you know, I need, I, I work my ass off. I I have no help. Um, I've brought in, you know, not just one of the largest projects this place has ever seen that I basically spent the last seven years of my life trying to do when I worked for the city prior to working for the county but a number of other projects as well. And, and all of those things are funding your TRT coffers. Um, you know, I don't know the logistics. I don't know the percentages. I know that, you know, um, I, um, I, I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. And regardless of whether I do it for the county or I do it for a 501c3, I'm not gonna stop bringing film here and bringing commercials here in the way that I, know how to do best and you know the county will continue to reap the benefits of that existence because it's they're paying you know 200 I just I've been talking to a couple of hoteliers um 
recently and restaurant owners and things. And I don't have data, sure. but I, his so data I, can, first. I, I can share with Rick. List. So we have 30 rooms with the Horizon Group. We've been contracted with them. And just for our hotel, went 30 rooms pretty much over the summer and it literally last week. Um, our contract with them, it's $410,000 for our hotel. That's just our hotel. We only have 30 rooms. So if you're Gonzo in, if you're the element, or if you're World Mark, which had $2 million, way more than that. To start um, for, as, the, as know, the other day. It's a huge amount that we're paying directly into CRT. And at the end of the day, she's the one. I mean, I've had an opportunity to talk to Kevin Costner many times. And literally, you know, my favorite story about why he's here is because literally she made him look left going down the street instead of right at a site. And that's when it clicked for him. This is when it should be. This is where we need to do it. And if she hadn't been there and if she hadn't been able to convince him to go revisit this spot, he may not have been here. He may have been in Arizona. And I know there's a lot of pushback whether he's good for business or not. Good for business here and good for natural resources or not good for natural resources. But from a business standpoint, I don't think that you're going to find many business owners um, or many employees who are going to be upset that that production is here because they have spent a lot of money here. Yeah, all those things. And again, yeah, it's not, and it's not the only one. That is, that is a big one. Um, and it's a one, and it's a big one that's leaving at the end of this week, at least the filming part uh, finishes and then they're wrapping out. Um, for the season, but then they are coming back again in the spring. And to have a film project come back for another film versus the commercial production that comes back to shoot another commercial is a very, it's a very different story. They've been on the ground here. They've been just spending money left, right, and center. I mean, I, 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 I would love for any of you to go to any one of the businesses um, and have a conversation with about how you know, well it's I don't, going. I, don't, I think all of us agree with what's being said. But, uh, so. What's the amount? Oh, well, I think you requested two for it, right? We did, which is just a place you got right now, 147. Yeah. So I think, you know, like we covered a lot of material today. And I think if we try to make decisions today, we'll run out of time and want to be able to cover the other elements of this agenda. So what I'm going to suggest is that we um, give consideration overnight and then be ready to make decisions tomorrow. So you say you threw that out as a placeholder. So what you're saying is there it's negotiable. Yeah, absolutely. We just looked at what we thought. I mean, it's a guess, right? We know what we need to do to like make the museum work. So we're looking at okay, well, if you've got take Bika out of the picture, if you have the commissioner there, they should be fairly compensated for the amount of hours that they're put putting in. So we have that salary in there that we think is what our studies have shown similar film commissioners earn. So that was the placeholder number that we put in. Um, and then we looked at, she's gonna need an admin um, pretty much. And then she, there's a travel expense because a film commissioner, their job is to travel around and get business in. So literally that's how we came up with that number. Um, if it happens, it happens great. If not, I mean, the owners are not looking at, we're gonna be up and running and getting $1.1 million in donations and, and stuff coming in in the first year. Uh, but we think that we have, we've hired some really bright people. You know, Elise, our museum director, she has a great background in nonprofits. Uh, Christina Rupusik, who runs our activities department, she's done nonprofits for years and years and years. Um, they both come with a Rolodex of donors. So you, you would be, would you be available tomorrow if, you know, after we have had a night to think about it and look at our budget and see where we're at to to negotiate how much. Yeah, absolutely. I can make myself available, not a problem. Well, all right. I think we need to move on to the next part of the agenda. So we don't run Thank out of time. You. Thank you, guys. Thank you very That's much. That's August. Daddy, everybody. All right. So some of you might want to stick around, though, because we've got some other um, and some of these things that are on the agenda are actually just support materials, not actual agenda items. So what we're up to next is uh, the newer revised position request. Renee, you want to lead this one off? And um, done some negotiations with the sheriff's office to chance here to go over. Chris, I can't um, pop my shirt. Oh, sorry, I got to unshare mine.
I was wondering why you were there. Emotional <laughs> support. <laughs> Just in case things go a little round. They, I got they send me with the chair every little set. Yeah, for you, yes. You look up there. Back on the glasses. Maybe I should hide it. But um, do you want to go by fund or by new, then reclassify? Well, let's just go, yeah, by new and then reclassify okay. because they're kind of. Separate. Sure. So, yeah, um, if you accept a little event bubble, you have more screen space. Oh, yeah. Sure. This thing, this little one, I guess. Uh, and keep it there. Um, so, the first one up is the evidence tech. This was first proposed as a spillman analyst as well as an evidence tech. Um, Shans agreed to drop it down to a part time position. Moving it from the grade 13, um, as previously proposed to a grade seven, which matches with um, our admin positions in the sheriff's office and across the county. Um, and then being part time, we dropped that hours to the 1040. The total cost on this position would be about 27,000, actually closer to 28,000. Um, originally, the original proposal was 106. Um, so, yeah, there's another component to that though with contract might go right. So originally it was like Renee said, it was 106 for a full time position, but it was a split through these jobs. So you got the evidence tech components, and they would help with inventories, going through, making sure all the evidence is taken care of and tracked and monitored correctly. Kept up to date because we've been so short of staff. I mean, it's 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 hard on the lieutenant to try and Manage patrol and investigations, plus go through and do inventories and all this other stuff. So, we really need help in that department. So, originally the plan was to do this evidence tech and pass the SSA. So, when we got Spillman, the contract with Spillman was said that we had to provide an SAA or an SSA or whatever it's called. Either way, it's a Spillman. What's the analyst SSA? administrator or something like that? Okay. Um, Spillman is our RMS system, so it takes care of all the records management. Uh, dispatch uses the CAD. Um, the road uses mobile, so they can have direct access to UC just so when they're doing their uh, citations, all that other stuff, and whatever. Um, and reporting system for them. And then also the GLs RMS system. So every time somebody gets booked, uh, all that information gets put into the Spillman. But we were required to provide that position when we were in the contract. We've kind of gotten away with it because we've had like four people doing that one job and it's taking away because they, they're full time positions, whether deputy or dispatch or jail staff. Um, they're supposed to be doing that. So they, when they're working on that, some other things get forgot. So we wanted to try and get a full time position for that. Um, but words yeah. trying to make adjustments and stuff because like everybody else i mean chris has said we're trying to get that cola so what i did was is i cut that evidence stack out to where it's part-time because originally it was at the grade 13 because it was the two jobs and we ran uh, we went and talked or we got and we talked to other hr departments and got their spill in um analysts that they had full time and got the comparisons on wages and that's where we came up with this grade 13 which, um but we dropped it down to a grade seven it's not a certified position for the evidence tech it's just part time hopefully somebody will come in will just um and help us get caught up on everything that we need i don't think we need a full time full time position for evidence tech right now um, somebody at the sheriff's office may disagree with me, but that's where I fit in my career, so they're not. Um, <laughs> and the Spillman side, um, so I talked to Spillman, um, and they informed me about a guy that has a company used to work for Spillman, um, and now he does SAA positions throughout the state and also in Arizona. He does SAA for uh, Davis County, UNA County, and Vernal. It's a yearly contract. Uh, he gave us back a $30,000 a year, um, and it takes care of all of what we need done. And if we don't want to retain the services the next year, it's we just don't. 
So by doing those two positions, I mean, we've got, so we went from 106 to I believe about 58,000 instead. So hopefully that helps and we still get the help we need. That's why I did that. So, and I also attached the, the quote where I sent an email with this with a quote from that Spillman side. So you can see it. The city is debating on going to Spillman right now. Um, he did do a quote for it if they do come up because they'll essentially pick it back on our server. Um, and it'll be an additional $12,000, but the city would be required to pay that if they were going to do that because he would manage the revenues. Um, but any questions on that? How does yeah. the city feel? Hmm? And, and, and what was the city's take on this position? Um, well, they're the ones that kind of brought it up to me. They said that if we do deal with this guy, they'll help pay for the cost. Okay, didn't nice. necessarily hear that from Jared, but I heard it from the guy that was there. And so I I see them doing it because they don't, they'll need somebody to help manage all of that stuff as well. I don't. And if they don't, I mean, I'm not going to pay the additional twelve thousand dollars in cost. I'm just going to pay that at thirty thousand. So, um, okay. yeah. Thanks, man. Okay, hey, moving along. Um, a personal services coordinator. Um, as you all know, I uh, this position will be in my department. Um, I currently have a payroll coordinator at a grade eight as well, so we wanted to equalize that that grade there. Um, I had this position approved a few times, and we've always kind of pulled it back because something else has happened, like um, COVID hitting, and then we transferred the benefits to support an IT a full time IT tech. Um, it was also approved one time before then, and I'm not quite remembering why we pulled it going forward. Um, nowhere to put them. Didn't, we don't have anywhere to put them. Um, so that's another kind of hurdle in it. Posing it a full time, originally I proposed it as an assistant director, but dropped it to a coordinator. Um, so I can go into length to why I need another person, but we do have a handbook update needed um, to stay on top of policies and procedures. Um, and then also getting updated policy and procedures out there. So. Um, I'll move along then. Deputy recorder. Um, this is, uh, they currently have one deputy recorder. Um, so this would be adding a second deputy recorder under the chief deputy. Um, it was asked that I put this on here as this employee would assist with keeping up with current record keeping duties, as well as updating processes, processes and digitizing, digitizing records. Um, what you can't see in these hidden columns is there is some um, additional inventory costs. So that'll be a one-time cost for some of these employees, like personal services coordinator, a deputy recorder um, that has an inventory cost under the engineer. So I'm going to expand this all out so you can see those. But so some of these costs in, in the total employee cost is going to be one time, but it's quite small in comparison. Um, since John's not here, we'll move to engineer. Um, I think we've kind of chatted about this one a few times and, and we're kind of to our breaking point on needing an engineer. Um, I did pull some comps and, and place it at this grade 20. Uh, quite honestly, I don't know that we'll get an engineer for that much. We could probably find a lower comp in, in, in the 60,000 range, but I don't know that that's going to give us the level of service we want. I think we'd be lucky to get it at that. Yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about this position a lot, and I know that people talk about it a lot with stormwater. Is this like a stormwater specific engineer? No, yeah. maybe it kind of depends on their qualifications, but I mean, probably not. I think that it would be mostly the position review and inspection, which includes stormwater. I mean, to me, I think just in searching out this person that it would be awesome with a little bit of a double whammy and then have qualifications from stormwater because that is something that we're hearing over and over and over again from people who well yeah as far as so there's two different components of stormwater management there's like the big stormwater projects and those are likely going to have to be specialized engineering right and you know it would never be uh just a run no civil engineer that would be doing that but then there's the Stormwater improvements that are associated with uh, subdivision improvements, and those would be covered by this engineer. Right. So the smaller ones that have to do with contention basins and all the stuff that goes into subdivision, 
So it all dovetails, but the design really of the big projects is going to be specialized. No, that's what I was. <laughs> so yeah, part of you know, support with those smaller developments oh, yeah. without town wide and form water. And it's been talked about. Yeah. I think almost the entire time it's been yeah. here. And I mean, just you know. It's not a financial decision per se because we're only spending about forty five thousand for subdivision review and inspection right now a year. So this is adding, you know, at least a hundred thousand dollars. <throat> but the level of service right now for our citizens is very low, and for our staff and ourselves as well, uh, probably I would consider it to be uh, substandard and not acceptable, which is why I'm proposing this position. The other reason I'm proposing is because we're gonna purchase the remodel interaction clubhouse and so we'll have space to add this we'll have space to add personnel services coordinator whereas in the past if they wanted to hire an engineer we want to have anywhere to put it. so the door is open on it so it is going to cost you know about at least another hundred thousand over what we're spending right now for the same services but i think that we'll get a dramatic increase in the level of service and a lot more responsiveness to you know, right now, you know, our engineers are you know, like, now like once every few weeks. Right. So if there's a big issue, um, it can't be addressed immediately, which is not good in a lot of cases. It happens. So we spend about 45,000 a year in engineering contracts. Uh, for subdivision or subdivision and inspection. Realistically, what do you think it's going to cost to, have, to find somebody that has the qualification? Well, I think this is a good starting place, but you know, it may end up that we'd have to advance the staff or maybe change the tweak the grade a little bit. I mean, it's possible, it depends on what kind of response we get and what the job market's looking like. Housing is always a big issue. Sometimes it's, you know, you get a lot of applications, but no them fall through because they can't find housing. Um, so there's a lot of big question marks that we don't know yet. I think this is a good place to start in terms of budgeting, but it's possible we might have to keep it. So you think it's best to wait and see rather than tweak it now? Yeah. On that note, um, when we budget for kind of proposed or open positions, we usually we usually place them at the step three. That would be somebody with about six years of experience on our current grading set chart or grading set policy. Um, and then we usually budget for um, two party insurance. Yeah. I mean, it could, if they're if they have, you know, they choose uh, the traditional family plan and add another twenty thousand to that full cost, at least. Um, but, you know, we deal with it, and then, you know, some of those little tweaks can be covered. If they're just, you know, smaller tweaks, we can adjust uh, budgets at the end of the year to capture any changes that happen. Is Tammy on the Zoom? I think she was. Tammy, are you on the Zoom? I'm here. Right. Tammy. Um, I think it'll make more sense if we got into your kind of kind of whole structure change when we get down to these reclassified positions, because it does make more sense. But we have proposed to add an additional operations uh, tech and um, ARF, which is airport rescue firefighter. Um, currently, we have one. So this grade is, is equalized across that grade as well. So we will so get is, into so this one's adding a new arm. adding a new position. Yep. A second. So maybe we should talk about airport <laughs> specifically because there's some give and take, I think, in reclassifications too. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe Tammy, if you just want to kind of give the overview of both the new position request, reclassifications, and any things that are going away. Yeah. So um what I'm proposing is um because currently we have um an airport operations manager position open. That's the position that I moved from into director. Um, and what I've proposed is rather than um, having one operations manager um, splitting those duties up and having two um, lead operations specialists, the reason I am um, adding this proposed position um, and putting a hold on the operations manager um, 
I don't I don't want to eliminate that position necessarily, but if we can readdress it in the you know in the future, um and in you know, when things are looking to where we can um financially make that work. So what I'm opting to do is to not fill the operations manager position, reclassify our, our ops specialist, um, and have them be leads for their shifts. Um, and when I say shifts right now, our our teams work, um, they work eight, 10 hour days, and then they have six days off. And that works well with our pay periods. Nobody ends up with overtime. And all of our weekends and holidays are covered. Um, and so what this allows us to do by adding another ARF ops tech, it evens out our numbers on our shifts. So even though we added a position this year, we have an odd number of folks and it, and it doesn't work well um, as far as coverage. And so what this does is it gives us two ARF um, people on shift every day. Um, currently, unless I'm there, we only have one person. Um, and so if someone needs to call in sick or like just recently um, took some vacation time, um, I had to come in and, and cover all those shifts, which I'm happy to do, um, but it, it puts us running a real thin crew. Um, and, and so um, the lead ops folks, they would, they would handle the um, duties that the operations manager generally takes care of. So when things happen um, during their week that they're working, um, they can deal with those situations. Um, you know, of course they run things by me, um, but this just kind of gives them that supervisory role um, to deal with uh, assigning tasks or dealing with incidences that happen um, at the airport. Um, and, and so adding in the, the technician is, um, they would still cover ARF and other duties associated with um, airside operations. And that would just um, give us that backup for someone need to take time off. Um, and as well as overall safety, um, we're asking one person to handle any emergency situation at the airport all on their own. Um, that's a lot to ask for one person. That's a lot to ask for two people. Um, but at least this gives us that minimum of two people on shift to handle any emergencies. Um, and so that's really the big push for this um, is to try to get that, that, um, that safety aspect beefed up um, because even on a good day, um, if something were to happen, you know, it takes Moab fire and EMS 15, 20, 25 minutes to get out to the airport. Um, and when you're talking about our commercial flights, you potentially have 53 people on an airplane and you're asking one person to handle an, an incident. Um, it, and then if we add a person, at least there's two people um, uh, to <laughs> deal with that. And then, of course, when I'm there, that adds a third third person there. Um, and then any incident we would have, I would respond. but um that's and that's the big push for this we uh vacated the manager position and bumped the grades up on this oh you read my mind <laughs> uh i was just looking at uh what the cost would look like but renee just scrolled to that um so the the eighteen hundred dollars probably not a true cost um this is off of that budget number of uh two-party insurance and things like that um, in the step three. So that could fluctuate quite dramatically if somebody chose a higher insurance. Um, but for the most part, pulling out that, that ops manager, about 98,000, and then putting that ops tax about 88,000. And then the increase in the two um, 
up specialists that are on right now until we have lead offs. Well, I'd say that's pretty neutral. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everybody. Going on on new proposed positions, um, we've got two out of active transportation and trails. Um, I'm going to use the, the nice thing. I just can't say it. In <laughs> meaning. Uh, the healthy trails coordinator, and I'll let um, Maddie speak a little bit to that. Um, this will be turning a, a current trail ambassador into a full-time role. So the grade was placed at what the trail ambassadors currently are at. Um, and then a little bit of inventory cost in that one. And the ops tech position. Um, would be Tyson moving in out of his full time role into a part time role, but keeping the full time position there and hiring for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can explain those. Yeah. And put it in context priority number one is that operations tech position, pretty essential to our operations and just like the existence of our department. And then, um, slightly lower priority would be the healthy trails coordinator. So, I'll start by talking about the operations tech. So, um, Tyson Swayze, he's been lived his whole life here. Um, and then he's been also involved in the trail construction, design, maintenance, all of that for over a decade. Um, he's about as qualified as you get. And so um, he'd like to start stepping away and exploring new things, but he's willing to stay on and, and fulfill that mentorship role. Right now, the, um, the trail building industry, it's booming, but it's still pretty young. So training opportunities are um, pretty, um, few and far between. So for example, last year, Tyson and I went to um, an advanced stone working workshop that was in Arkansas, and then we taught one <laughs> in Utah. So um, really the trainings that are available, like, you know, we potentially might be teaching in Utah. So it's, um, you know, really it's just um, the best option is to just have that mentorship started. I mentored um, the previous sort of director position at Tromix for three years before I took over. And so what um, what that person would be learning, they'd be learning how to manage the trail crew in the field. So that's like the technical aspects, how to assess projects and have um, time estimates so we can schedule. That would be um, learning how to manage large volunteer groups um, and then just building those relationships with our partners. So everything we do, we can basically do because we've built up trust with the land managers. And so now they trust us to you know, fulfill projects, no matter how crazy that they might seem. Hawk slide, if you guys go out there tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so um, pretty much we just need sort of a stepping stone to bring someone else in that position. And we can't really cut it because I need a full-time person helping because otherwise that means I'm you know, suddenly split between my job and this other responsibility. So we need to keep the full time, but there's got to be a transition period. Um, and then the healthy trails coordinator. So right now we have um, six part time positions for the trail ambassadors. And we've been talking with the Southeastern Utah Health Department. And um, basically, there's a need in the community for dealing with the human waste issue that's going on on public lands. And so they, um, the health department doesn't really have the capacity to manage someone right now. They've they've hired people in the past. It just hasn't, nothing's really gotten off the ground. So they've offered to pay for half of a full-time position. So this, this person would spend um, half their time doing just regular trail ambassador duties out in the field. And then the other half of their time, like for example, in the winter, they could be working on doing things like getting um, a scat machine in place for groovers and helping with all the uh, um, initiatives we already have going on with educating about human waste. And so a major advantage to us is that we have some really excellent talent. Um, you know, our trail ambassadors include like former park rangers, and like we really like to keep them and it's just hard right now, um, you know, to keep people that qualified the part time. So we could keep someone for two years is what the health department's committed for funding 50% of the position. Um, and then it would also benefit us because um, yeah, human waste is already kind of a big part of what we're doing out there, educating folks in the field. So this is a conversion of an already existing trail ambassador. Yep. So there's going to be the fifty percent savings on the full time position, plus the difference between a trail ambassador and whatever half half of the full time would be. So it's not really a very substantial increase in the budget. I don't know if we calculated that right, but I didn't. No, it probably is <clears throat> three percent. 
Well, yeah, the benefits are a big part of it, we're but still, you know, we're we're only paying for half of the full time exhibition, and then the, the impact of the budget is going to be the difference between a, a part time trail ambassador and fifty percent of a full time trail ambassador. Yep. So yep. I don't know if that's maybe fifteen twenty thousand. Mother, remind me, did we reduce the hours in trail ambassador yet? Okay. No. Okay. No. So yeah. So this would replace one of the part time hiking trail ambassador positions. We have that in the budget currently because you know that's what we need. So if this doesn't get approved, we wanted that in there. Um, but yeah, we can replace one of those. And then um, for Tyson's position, which again is the one that I'm uh, really hoping happens for next year. So right now, um, like I would love to keep a trail technician position that's in there open um, because we, you know, we need to be training people uh, since it's such a low, a slow learning curve for learning all of these um, technical trail building techniques. But we could cut one of those too if we had to um, to compensate for having that new position. So we basically have one point five operations techs this year, and then going forward, we'd probably just have one like after this year. Yeah, I would say. I mean. Honestly, like what we would pay for trail design as a community would be hundreds of thousands of dollars. And right now we get that in house yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at an hourly rate. So, you know, I would say that um, it would need to be the same level of mentorship. Like this would really be like um, Tyson taking this person out in the field, going over everything they're looking at at the project, like the really um, in-depth stuff. I would say in the future, it would probably be to our advantage to keep Tyson on payroll for select projects that otherwise cost us way more to contract out. Right. Um, but yeah, it would be this. This would be like the transition year, or two thousand twenty-three. All right. Thank you. Better keep moving. Okay. Moving <laughs> on. Um, we talked. We touched on all the airport uh, reclassification proposals. Um, there's a proposal of the commission's office um, to include some public um, information officer type duties into Alicia's job description, or the original. Um, spreadsheet that you all received had this cost set closer to nine, maybe even 11,000. I had something goofy in the um, the but the benefits. So this is the, the true cost of that change to the 2,000. 2,300. 2,300, thank you. Um, there's a proposal for the jail admins position to be bumped up to a program manager. Um, there's the sobriety 24 seven program um, that came on this year in 2022, uh, and that's just accounting to match it the grade to some of the um, current other program managers that we have across the county and um, really handle that drug programming, but also any other programming that might come into the jail. Shannon, do you have anything quick to add about that? Yeah, I mean, you, you remember when I presented the 24 7 program mm -hmm. to the commission, and I was also asked, sounds like it's going to be a lot. Do you need a full time position for that? And I said, no, and I think we can manage. It's just going to be a lot more work for my administrative assistant. Well, that's my administrative assistant. Um, so after that, we found out how much she's going to be doing. She installs ankle monitors. She has to do all the accounting for it. She has to keep in touch with SCRAM. She gets notifications for that. So she fills me in on that. So then I have to contact the person whether they're in uh, breach of the agreement and that she's uh, she has to keep in touch with DPS, Department of Public Safety, the county attorney's office, and the, and the courts to keep everybody in line with this. So it, it is quite an add to what she's already doing as the jail administrative assistant. Um, and also, I'm always seeking more programs for the jail um, to try to bring more stuff in. So the intent is if we make her the program manager, she would also be overseeing that as well. So, I mean, I didn't want to add all of this onto her and not compensate her for her time. Um, so I talked to Steve. Well, first I talked to Steve, made sure I could do it. And then I talked to Renee. And then she, I said, is there any other jobs that would be similar to this? There was a program manager position and it was two grades higher than what Amy currently was. So that's why I went to this. So, I mean, and we do get paid for the 24 seven program right now. I'm keeping it at six um, until everybody gets used to it. But the plan is, I mean, you're gonna add more. Um, we do get paid for it. I mean, realistically, it, the cost of $6,000, almost $7,000 a 
I put 10 people in that program that pays that. So, uh, which we're going to have more, you know, if the program's successful, I imagine we're going to have more than 10 people needed. Are we always going to have that many people? I hope not. Hopefully, people stop committing crimes. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but realistically, the program's there to help. It's not designed to be a rich man's program, so we're not going to be making a lot of money off of it. But it'll every little bit will help. But Amy's doing a front of the work, so that's why I wanted to uh, give her a little bit of a bump in pay. So. Okay. Moving along, I don't know if Dan Lee's still on. I know she had to hop off her appointment, but um, when we did our salary survey for 2022, district court was slightly behind us because they're on a fiscal year. So they've come out with their numbers. Um, so this one great increase on the deputies um, in justice court would be to, to kind of equalize with the closest competitor um, down the hall there. So um, it just plugs us into our comparable from the last salary survey? Um, did, and I also pulled their comparable. Because we don't typically don't just use one data point to assess salary. Yes. <clears throat> I have um, a link to all of those, but I didn't link my sheet there. So I'll make sure that gets dumped in there. Um, and I am, I am still logged in. This was one that when we did the salary survey, it at the time that we knew that district court was working on this and we intended and it was part of the discussion to make sure that we intended to um you know if they if they did come out with an increase that we it was our intent to then bring that back if it was something that um was a large enough change and with this it does look like it is especially where the position sorry to cut into you renee the position um, kind of meets in between two of, we don't have the same exact structure and what our office positions look like, but are, are titled, but we do have the same work duty and um, it falls in between a judicial assistant and a case manager, which then we kind of took the average between those two positions. Thanks, Kelly. Um, moving into economic diversification, um, we have we currently have this admin role, which was also kind of special events heavy. So we, um, at the very minimum, need to rework that job description. Um, but August has kind of. Um, I can speak to that. Yeah, put out a request. <clears throat> yeah, basically the the thought there is that we've had this admin assistant role that had a big special event program component to it, and that's kind of taken over that that role's um, scope of work. But that special event. Um, permitting is moving to a different position component. Uh, basically, I have to redo the job description no matter what. Um, and as we're looking at program priorities for the next year, I thought that there would be a, a good opportunity to increase some capacity in our office um, to take on some of those programs. Um, so it's it's basically all of the typical admin assistant duties in our office plus um, new program development that would be overseen by the second change here, which is basically promoting Ben to, you know, an assistant director on the economic diversification side. Um, and so he'd be overseeing the build out of the programs under that position. Um, and we'd also have a VISTA kind of under his purview as well. Um, so it's building up some more capacity to, to develop some more programs. I think specifically with the workforce development um, piece there, and we're going to need some, some big support on outreach and um, kind of coordinating the strategic planning process next year. What grade are those positions still? Um, currently, the admin assistant is a grade seven and best position is a grade nine. So both of these are two grade increase. Um, and then the last one on my list um, is the responsible recreation coordinator. Um, this one's at a grade nine. I'll let Maddie speak to it a little bit, but uh, equalizing that with the operations manager um, and moving it up one grade to a grade 10 uh, would make both of those positions within the department at the same level. They both have about the same level of managerial duties assigned to them, where the operation manager handles the trails tech and the responsible recreation coordinator handles the trail ambassadors. Yeah, and what, this is a new position as of this year, so I wasn't sure how much uh, responsibility um, that position was going to take on, and it turns out it's a ton. So um, it's about 
uh, it's equal to, uh, like Renee said, it's equal to the other position we have now with the six part time. Um, and then, you know, all these different other aspects of the responsible rec program they have going on. You're not, but uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk to that. Uh, okay. uh, Maddie requested, um, uh, I'll take it. I I miss uh, misinterpreted an email from Maddie on um, priorities. So uh, Maddie requested that we relook at her grade as well, going up a one grade increase. Correct. Yep. Um, maybe a twelve, two or thirteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> can I put in a request now too? Because of the because of the the increased responsibility under these two, having these two um, managers essentially under you. Yeah. And to be clear, I mean, that was a conversation Renee and I had a few months ago. Yes. We just had a miscommunication. We did. We did have that. And the reason for that is I, I just looked at all the um, payroll information that is public, and I'm the lowest paid department head, and I have two full times, usually have an AmeriCorps VISTA, and then 14 part times, and then four additional part times in the summer. So it's 18 part time positions that I'm managing. I'll read on that, all of that. Um, the other, <laughs> the other edits were just the, uh, the unfreeze of the patrol deputies on the airport side. Um, Chris has negotiated that we can cut those from the budget. So that's about 202 who cut um, with the benefits we had plugged in there and then 2000. Um, I'll go down to my totals here, which will change a little bit for active trails and transportation, but do you mind if I jump in for a second? Yeah. So for that, um, sorry, just going back briefly to that um, transition of a trail ambassador from part-time to full-time, I just did like a simple quick and dirty um, analysis. And so given the hours that I'd like them to cover at like a $20 range, it would be about $16,000. So that would be what we were subtracting from that full time, the 50% of the full-time as well. So yeah, it ends up being, not much more. Um, and then also just say one more thing about my position that I didn't mention. Also, when I've been doing the job since 2016, and I became officially part of the county in 2019, and none of the experience for any previous work was accounted into that. So that's also why I'm feeling really motivated to develop that out. Um, in total right now, uh, we're looking at 290,000 um, in the, just the general fund with all of the the cuts and the adjustments there, it's 168. Um, economic development, we're looking at about 10,000. Um, active trails, uh, this is not accounting for what the health department would pay or anything like that. And then also not Maddie's increase, um, though I would think it would be similar to about this 3,000, if not a little bit more, maybe 4,000. So that's 112 currently. Okay. I got to. <laughs> <laughs> That's, of course. That's what I do all day long, every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's going to take me a while, probably. So I think what would help is if I take this and plug it in, we can sell, see where our bottom line is going to be. We're going to do that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, see where we're at. Okay. Have that ready for the next meeting. Um, can you unshare your screen? Yeah, absolutely. For what it's worth, Kevin said he has one minute compared to 40 half hour. Mm -hmm. What's that? Kevin said he has a minute for 40 half hour. Right now? <laughs> right now. What he said. So, you know, the capital project requests haven't really changed that much uh, since uh, the tentative budget. I did add in the backflow valve for OSTA that it's just a carryover project. Actually, a lot of these projects are carryover from this year. We budgeted them for budgeted for them this year, and they, they aren't going to happen. So, it, the total cost right now is nine hundred twenty-four thousand. I'm going to propose that um, we pay for that out of the existing fund balance instead of transferring it from the general fund, which will make it easier to balance the general fund by that amount. That help. Um, we did budget to transfer about one point two million into it this year, and if I can, I'll maintain that contribution. Even though there's not going to be a reciprocal expense for that total, which means that the 3.9 million fund balance that we have is probably going to go up over 4 million. And so I think we're safe uh, to deal with the Interact Clubhouse, the remodel, um, all these capital project requests with the finance already right there. 
Um, so that's just kind of my recommendation on that. That kind of takes care of a good chunk of the deficit in the general fund if we want to go that route. Um, and then the general fund uh, fund balance is just likely to you know maintain itself around eight million in with these transfers. I mean, I haven't really. I need after I get done with the twenty twenty three stuff and get that mostly nailed down. My next project is in twenty twenty two. If I if I do, it's almost as much work, and then get that done in the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> That'll give us an idea of you know pretty accurate idea of where we're going to close this year and how our fund balances are going to be affected. But things are looking okay, I think, um, even with reduced revenues. So not too concerned. Uh, so that's my spiel on the capital projects. Um, are any of the airport ones uh, grant eligible? Yes. So uh, some of these I might actually I still need to work with Tammy to kind of part out which ones are what. The ones that are eligible for grants probably should be transferred over to Fund 56 and then have the grant move into that fund. Um, some of them are not eligible, grant eligible. So we'll have to figure that out. We have a little bit of one of the CARES Act grants um, left, about 329000 I think, we can be spent on capital projects. You know, one of the big issues, though, that we're looking at in the future is that we've got about a million dollar grant for airport operations, which we're going to close, be close to spending all in one year next year, which means that the subsequent year, 2024, we could be down a million dollars in revenue. And that's a big, you know, loss to the general fund. So that's why I'm trying to be fairly conservative this time around, because we could end up you know, what's a, a billion dollar deficit, which would be happy, you know, happy to tell us on that. So I just want to bring that up, you know, as a, a caveat to what we're looking at. Do those grants come every two years or something? No, I mean, there, we have, I've never, we've never had them before. It was really a COVID related response to prop up the essential air service industry. So, um, I don't know. Is, is Tammy still on or is she off? I'm not anticipating that we're probably going to, you know, up until COVID hit, we were essentially on the line to carry the full cost of the operation at the airport. And as the airport grew, you know, we got almost all of our uh, capital projects done out there, uh, paying only about 5% of the cost because the FAA covered 95% of the cost. <laughs> that part was fine, but the additional cost of operation was on us. And so that's what we're looking at. So we're, you know, we've had uh, a lot of assistance since COVID, but that's, I think, going to go away. And it will, and it will come back on us to fully support the airport again. Probably yeah, in 2024. I'll just think Candy is online. I heard my name. <laughs> so we were just talking about um, the operations grant. I think it was 41 that we're budgeting to spend most of next year. Are you aware yeah. of any other big operations grants that might be on the horizon? Not that I've heard of yet. Um, um, there just hasn't hasn't been any word on that. Okay, so that's what I'm, yeah, I mean, that's my point is that yeah. we've been kind of riding the gravy train a little bit just with regard to getting the airport's operations paid for for the last three years. Yeah. That's probably going to go away, and that's going to be on us again. So that kind of means if you look at it, either a million dollar reduction in revenue or a million dollar increase in expenses, either way, we should be prepared for that. Better up that parking fees, Tammy. <laughs> right. Or, well, there's, um, <clears throat> Some building going on that will um, generate a little bit of revenue. So, um, yeah, we're we're myself and you know the airport board. We're trying to to push for things that will help generate revenue. So, all right, thanks. So, moving on, cost of living adjustment. We still have fucking at eight point seven percent, same as the Social Security Administration adjusting. And uh, 
uh, close to the average annual inflation rate, highest it's been in a long, long time. And then we've got a couple of miscellaneous budget requests. We've got a request, I think, from 1600 from the soil conservation. Uh, and then also, did you want to talk about homeless council's request? What did I ask? You didn't, you didn't ask for a dollar now. You just asked for money. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Rihanna asked for like five or six. So. Yeah, I mean, that's what it comes down to is they, I think in the end, these few organizations that are doing a lot regarding our home, homeless population, and, and it's just coming out of their own budget, right? So I think it would be nice to eventually, if the county came up with a line item for that, for those entities. Um, All right, so anybody object to me plugging in six dollars for the Federal Conservation Commission, like $6,000 I think it's time that we yeah we, we need to stuff into homeless council. Yeah. I had that for for a long time. Yeah. And it is really truly being run by nonprofits and volunteers. Yeah. I mean, I know the soul shed alone this year. Sorry, just numbers. I know we talked about the other day. They've they've dispersed about seven thousand worth of inventory out of the soul shed. So that's just give that's just one one amount, right? Let alone and our homeless as Impressively, it is increasing. Yep. Yep. Still put on a situational things. Okay, Sorry. so that's it on that. Um, we have a closed session next. It's okay to take a quick break. Yeah. Can you please quick clarify that 1600 what that was for? The soil, soil conservation. The soil conservation. And I think it was. Mission, it's, it? yeah, okay. we got, yeah. We got soil conservation district. district. Yeah. Soil conservation district. Conservation district. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the yeah. Grand County Soil Conservation Center. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of figure. Grand County Soil Conservation Center. Okay. Was it 16 or was it 15? It's 15 in the packet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever. They're, they're at. Yeah. 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 I remember reading the book letter. Okay. I'm going to go to the back. It was Sam Cunningham. You better just give her what she wants. You better. <laughs> when, when are we coming back? The, how long? Five, uh, five minutes? Ten minutes? Yeah. Uh, how's that go? Uh, right. Who called this meeting? Are we going straight into the yeah. session? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. I don't, is it right over that?
didn't start recording yet. Go ahead. I don't know. Is is Christine's Oh, she's on right. Let's just make make, a motion to go. I make a motion to go into closed session to discuss pending and reasonable and imminent litigation, character, professional competency, or physical or mental health of an individual. I'll second that. All right. All in favor of going into closed session? Uh, Aye. Okay. All right. What's the vote? So, the vote is six to nothing with uh, Kevin absent.